The Kraft Food Company, makers of parquet margarine, presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. There are so many good reasons for serving Kraft's parquet margarine. Parquet gives you what you've always wanted in a table spread. It looks wonderful, it tastes wonderful, and it spreads smoothly even when ice cold. But there's still another reason for buying Kraft's Parquet regularly. With every pound, you can order a pair of famous Powers Model nylon stockings at half price. In just a few minutes, I'll tell you more about this sensational offer by Parquet Margarine. snow is falling, and all in all, it's the kind of day that might seem dull to some people, but not to the great Gildersleeve. <laughs> For a bachelor, he's a great home lover, and he's looking forward with considerable relish to spending the day by the fireside with his nephew, Leroy. Right, George, this is my kind of weather, Leroy. If I was a bear, I'd hole up in a tree. If you were a bear, it might be a good idea. It's hunting season. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just look at the snow settling on the window panes. We'll throw another log in the fire and have a fine afternoon. We will? Just you and me. Well, gosh, Unc, I plan to go to the movies with Piggy and H.H. H. Who's H.H.? H. Hole in the head. <laughs> Hole in the head? What a name. Well, his name is Humphrey Higginham, but he'd rather be called Hole in the Head. <laughs> well, anyway, you don't want to go to the movies this afternoon, Leroy. Haven't you any appreciation of home and family? Well, sure, but... Think of the fun there is in just sitting, staring into the fire. Oh, sure. It's the holiday season, nearly Thanksgiving. In a cold, snowy day like this, it might be well to read Pilgrim's Progress. Oh, brother. <laughs> it's very evident you don't want to stay with your old uncle. Well, Aunt, I'm surprised you haven't got a date. A date? Well, Miss Henshaw, the school principal, is probably as lonesome as you are. You and I thought just you and I... It's a fine afternoon for you and Miss Henshaw to sit on the couch in front of the fire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can read Pilgrim's Progress. Yeah, well, we might not do that. Yeah, I mean, we've both read it. <laughs> Why don't I call Irene? Well, I wouldn't if your heart isn't in it. You what? Well, maybe I should stay with you. Now, Leroy, I don't want you to give up your friends in your movie. You don't think about me. Oh, I can't help thinking about you. Wouldn't be right for me to go off and practically force you to spend the afternoon with Miss Henshaw alone. <laughs> Leroy, you said you were going to a movie. Now go. Okay. And is it all right with you if I go with the kids to the drive-in after the movies? Be fine. In that case, I might just ask Miss Henshaw to stay for dinner. Sure. Live it up, Bob. Okay. <laughs> no, no. I'm just interested in spending a quiet afternoon and evening. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Bertie. Yes, excuse me? Uh, Leroy won't be here for dinner. No, sir. So I thought I'd invite Miss Henshaw over. Oh, yes, sir. Could we have something a little extra special? Yes, sir. Just leave it to Bertie. Good. Bertie will light the candle, serve the dinner, put on some soft music, and make herself discreetly scarce. <laughs> <laughs> you wonderful, Bertie. Yeah, I better phone Irene and tell her what's cooking. Yes. Yes, sir. The afternoon is beginning to shape up. Irene, this is Throckmorton. How are you, Throckmorton? Great. And I have a great idea. Oh? There's a big fire in the fireplace here, and Bertie's preparing something extra special for dinner. How would you like to share the day with me? I'd love to. Swell. But I'm busy. Oh. <laughs> what does he look like? Oh, uh, wavy blonde hair, deep blue eyes, long lashes. Long lashes. And five feet, too. 
He's that short? <laughs> Strockmorton. She is the ninth grade teacher. Oh. Well, I wasn't concerned, of course. <laughs> I've been promising for weeks to drive out to her father's farm with her. Well, you've been promising for weeks. Couldn't you postpone it another week? No, I'm afraid not. They're expecting us. We're going for some cranberries. You going to pick cranberries today? Yeah, Irene. It's cold outside. I know. It'll be warm here by the fire. We can toast marshmallows and popcorn. Tell her about Pilgrim's Progress. Hey. <laughs> Quietly, Roy. How about it, Irene? I'm really terribly sorry, Throckmorton, but Miss Gunther won't drive out there alone, and I can't disappoint her. Well. Won't you invite me another time? Oh, yeah, of course. Any time at all. <laughs> It is going to be a dull afternoon for me, here all alone. I'm sorry, Throckmorton. Well, have fun with the cranberries. I'll try. Bye. Goodbye, Irene. She'd rather be in the cranberry patch than with you, huh? <laughs> You're all right, Leroy. But I'm not going to stay here alone if Irene can't come. I'll invite that cute little travel agent, May Kelly. Miss Kelly? Hey, now, I think I'll stay home. It... <laughs> no, you won't, young man. Okay, huh? That boy's growing up too fast. <laughs> yeah, I won't take any chances on May turning me down. It'll be pretty hard for her to say no if I come to her door and say, well, let's go. <laughs> Here. Snow's getting a little deep. Yeah, I'll get May and hurry back home. Then let it snow. We might even get snowed in. <laughs> I'll be right there, Joe. Joe? She must be expecting somebody else. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. I did drop Martin. Hello, May. I, I was expecting Joe. No. Oh, come here, you silly boy. Well, I don't know if I should, with Joe coming. We're going skiing. Skiing? Uh-huh, I was lacing my boots. That's why I couldn't answer the door. Well, I thought we might spend the afternoon and evening at my house, by the fire. Bertie's preparing a big dinner for us. Really? Oh, Throckmorton, I didn't know about this. Well, I didn't know about Joe, either. Oh, Joe's just one of the boys. One of the boys? Yes, one of our skiing group. The same crowd goes up to the snow every winter. Well, I didn't know you were sliding down hills with fellows I don't even know. But, Throckmorton, you have other dates. May, you're trying to change the subject. I came over here feeling sure I could count on you. You planned all this just for me. And if you don't come... I'll be sitting by the fire all alone. Uh, <laughs> you really want me to come, don't you? You bet. <laughs> you're sweet to ask me, and I wish I could. But while you're sitting by the fire alone, I want to give you something to think about. Oh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll think about that kiss all winter. <laughs> Snowing harder. Yeah, no use telling May I asked Irene over first. She never would have kissed me on the cheek. Yeah, that May's quite a girl. Hey, Oh, you know, hello, Leroy. Haven't you gone to the movie yet? I'm just on my way to meet Piggy and Hole in the Head. You all dated up? No, Miss Kelly can't, can't make it either. Tough, Frank. Why don't you join, join our Lonely Hearts Club? To the movies, young man. Okay, so long. Lonely Hearts Club. Well, if I can't have one of my girlfriends, I wonder if Peavy can come over. Hello, Peavy. Oh, hello, Mr. Gillespie. 
Brrr, it's cold. Yeah, quite a blustery day. Yeah. The weather always lets you know when it's close to Thanksgiving. Yeah, it looks like we're close to Valentine's Day. What? You have a red Cupid's bow on your cheek. Oh, glad Leroy didn't see that. I thought all girls these days used lipstick that was smearproof. <laughs> I see you don't get kissed by many girls. Oh, right, Petey. See somebody off on the train? No, it was somebody going on skis. Hmm. Give you a peck as she passed, did she? Now, <laughs> uh, let's not get too curious, Peaky. There. Yeah, I wiped it off. Well, I'm not curious, but Mrs. Peavy will want to know all about it. She's visiting her mother, and when she gets home, she'll want to know all the news. Say, you are batching this week, aren't you? Yeah, just me and the parent. I do the cooking, and he does criticizing. <laughs> He says, Mr. Peavy do this and Mr. Peavy do that. Who do you think he is, Mrs. Peavy? <laughs> Peavy, how'd you like to come over to my house for dinner tonight? Yeah, I am getting a little tired of eating crackers with the parrot. <laughs> You're right, George. Bertie's cooking a big dinner. There'll be nobody there to eat it but you and me. Hey, what time do you close the store? Mm, on Sundays, I usually close around 2 o'clock. You'll come over as soon as you close up. I've got the whole day planned. Oh, my. You're doing all this for me? Well, who else? It's a fine day for good friends to be together. Yeah, I always like to get friendly with Bertie's dinner. You very nice of you to think of me. You don't mention it. What are friends for? Well, where you buy money from? <laughs> <laughs> you do want to get me over there to buy some money, do you? Phoebe, how can you say that? You were my closest friend. Yeah, I'm so close you wouldn't get in. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hurry over, Phoebe. Bertie! That you, Miss Gilsley? Yeah, it's me. I thought that was you. You can go ahead with the dinner plans. Yes, sir. You got a pretty girl coming over? No, I got a friendly neighborhood druggist. Come again? Mr. Peavy is going to be our guest. Oh, yes, sir. Ran out of girls to ask, huh? Well, uh, Miss Kelly had a date to go skiing. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Miss Gilsey. What's there to be sorry about? Mr. Peavy and I'll have a fine day together. Yeah, I'm not the kind of fellow who has to spend all his time with good-looking girls. No, sir? Actually, there's no greater enjoyment than getting together with an old and true friend. Talking man talk. Yes, sir. We can play pinochle, talk politics smoke cigars. Yeah, I'm glad it turned out this way. Want me to answer the phone? Yeah, I'll take it, Bertie. Hello? Rock Martin, do you know who this is? Oh, hello, Grace. <laughs> May. Oh. Oh. Who's Grace? You, I, I didn't say Grace. I said that uh, I thought you were some other place. Uh, Ski. Hmm. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm home. You, what happened to Joe and Ski? Well, it snowed so hard, the skiing party was called off. Well. Is that fire still burning in your parlor? Is that fire still burning? May you ski right over. Oh, isn't it wonderful the way things worked out, Scott Morton? Now we have all afternoon and evening together. Yeah. See you soon. Goodbye. Right, George, she's coming, Bertie. Yes, sir. But what you gonna do about Mr. Peavy? Peavy? Yeah, I did tell him this dinner was planned just for him. You know, I'll have to call and explain. Yes. But just say, fire, Mr. Peavy, but instead of holding pinochle hands, I'd rather hold hands with Miss Kelly. <laughs> no, I won't say that. What will I say? <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. When you tell a woman about a real bargain, things begin to happen. And believe me, they've been happening ever since I began telling you about Parquet Margarine's wonderful offer to send you Powers Model Nylon Stockings at half price. More than one and a third million pair have already been ordered, and the same women are reordering again and again. Just imagine getting first quality Powers Model Nylon Stockings at half price. Only 75 cents a pair instead of $1.50. 
These beautiful nylons were designed by John Robert Powers to flatter the legs of America's most glamorous models. They're 51-gauge, 15 denier, and they have a flexible top and a tapered heel for perfect fit. A famous testing laboratory reports these Powers model nylons are the equal in quality and wearability to nylons selling regularly at $1.50. But you can order as many pairs as you want for only 75 cents and a yellow end flap from a package of Crafts Margarine for each pair ordered. You have a choice of two popular shades and either a dark seam or a self-color seam. Complete instructions for ordering are given inside every package of Crafts Parquet Margarine, the delicious margarine that spreads smoothly even when ice cold. You can start building a luxurious wardrobe of nylon stockings at half price tomorrow when you buy Parquet. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Well, there's an old Chinese proverb which says, if you don't want somebody to come to dinner, don't invite them. The great Gildersleeve wanted one of his girlfriends, but when this didn't work out, he invited his old friend Peavy. Now that his girlfriend could come to dinner, how does he get rid of an old friend? Yeah, I was just too lavish with my invitations, Bertie. Yes, sir. I'm too big-hearted. Of course, I got enough dinner for three. No, that's not the point. I asked Miss Kelly before I asked Peavy, so it should be our afternoon. Yes. Yeah, I'll phone Peavy right now and save him the trip over. He's a druggist. He should know he shouldn't come out on a cold day like this anyway. He never should have accepted my invitation. No, sir. Well, right, George, I don't want anything to interfere with my date with Miss Kelly. I've planned the afternoon too well. And too often. He, <laughs> he doesn't answer. No. Yeah, but he's already closed. It's after two o'clock. He's probably on his way over. Well, the way to get out of this is to put a note on the door. I'll just write it on this phone pad. What you gonna say? Measles? No. No, I'll just say, sorry... Peavy, my plans have changed. We'll explain later. Yeah, Peavy will read this and think there's nobody home. Yes, sir. This is the best way to handle it, Bertie. Better than trying to explain it to him. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'll use this thumbtack we hang the Christmas trees on every year. Yeah, yeah, that does it. Uh, sometimes, Bertie, you have to go to great lengths to protect the friendship. You sure go out of your way to do that, all right. Hey, hey, just in time. Look out the window, Bertie. He's rounding the corner. Well, Bertie better get in the kitchen now. There won't be any dinner for your guests, whoever it turns out to be. <laughs> yeah. All right, Bertie. Here he comes up on the porch. He's at the door. Must be reading the note now. Oh, for... Why is he ringing the doorbell after I left him that note? Peavy's getting a little pushy. And now that I've written the note, I can't answer the door. It looks as if I didn't want him. Miss Kelsey? Yes, Bertie? I saw that note you wrote blow across the driveway out back. Oh, my goodness. Then he didn't see it. He must have blown off the door. Yes, sir. Well... I'm in this so deep, I'll just have to wait for him to go away. It's too bad Mr. Peavy can't be with us. Yeah. We still can see three. Yeah, I know. Plenty of food. All right, Bertie. Food for everybody. Yeah, it's too late. I'm afraid Peavy's gone. I'll sneak a peek out the door. Boo. Oh. <laughs> Boo. I thought you'd gone. Yeah, I mean... Uh... Well, part of my patience is gone. But when you didn't answer the bell, I assumed you were busy in another part of the house. Yeah, see, he's been busy, all right. Hello, Miss Peavy. Yeah, Bertie. Let me take your coat and hat. Yeah, well. Yeah, uh, maybe Peavy won't want to take off his coat and hat. Well, I'm not going to eat with my hat on. Hey, <laughs> Bertie. Yes, sir. Well, Peavy, we're good enough friends for me to tell you I've invited Miss Kelly over. You don't say. Yeah. Well, I'm glad she can join us. I've always been fond of Miss Kelly. <laughs> but I invited May before I asked you. Well, ladies first, I always say. 
Well, I thought I'd mention it because I didn't know how you'd feel about sticking around under the circumstances. <laughs> so I wouldn't want you to feel that two's company and three's a crowd. <laughs> I won't feel crowded with Miss Kelly around. <laughs> oh, my. I thought I would. How is it? King, five guys shot in the first picture. I just come out to get some popcorn. Hey, I thought you were driving out to the country for cranberry. Well, it's such a bad day, Miss Gunther called it off. Does Unc know that? No. Well, why don't you go over home? Well, I had to turn down his invitation once. I can't go over now and say, let's eat. But Unc's home all alone. He'd be tickled to death to see you, Miss Henshaw. You think he would? Well, sure. He planned the whole day for you. He's just moping around the house with nobody to talk to. Well, you say they shoot five men in that picture? Yeah. I think I will go spend a quiet evening with Throckmorton. You know, I love a day like this, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, I thought I did. Here's the holiday nut bowl if you gentlemen care to crack some walnuts and nibble while you're waiting for Miss Kelly. Yeah, thank you, Bertie. Miss Peavy, I forgot to ask you how Miss Peavy is. Oh, she's enjoying her visit with her mother, Bertie. That's nice. I had a letter from Mrs. Peavy just the other day. Yeah, perhaps you'd like to go home and spend the afternoon answering her letter. <laughs> well, there wasn't much to answer. She just said, hello, Mr. Peavy, give my love to the parish. <laughs> If you gentlemen want anything, just call Bertie. Thank you, Bertie. Yeah, about the parrot, TV. If you feel like going home and feeding him at any time, feel free to run right along. <laughs> He's been fed. <laughs> what a difficult guest. Miss Gilfrey, do you want to get it or do you want me to get it? Now, if it's Miss Kelly, I'll get it. Yep. Never mind, TV. I'll go, Bertie. Yes, sir. Here I am, Throckmorton. Well, step in, May. <laughs> oh, it's nice and warm in here. You bet. Hey, let me take your wraps. Thank you. Is that Mr. Peavy? Yeah, Peavy's in the parlor. Hello, Miss Kelly. Well, how are you, Mr. Peavy? Oh, fit as a fiddle, waiting for the fun to start. Uh, <laughs> uh, May... It looks like Peavy's going to stay for dinner. Oh? Well, since Mr. Gildersleeve was nice enough to ask me, the least I can do is stay. I think that's wonderful. Thank you. Now I have an attractive man on each arm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Well, what will we do before dinner, boys? Well, I guess you wouldn't be interested in Pinochle. That's all Peavy knows how to play. Uh, that's what you think. How about spinning the bottle? Oh. <laughs> oh, 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 Mr. Peavy, I didn't realize you were so much fun. <laughs> oh, I'm a live wire. I'm here, sir. <laughs> You're just used to the sticking the much like Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Why did I ever invite him? <laughs> Mr. Peavy, you're priceless. Do you mind if I sit here by you? Mm, I'd be delighted. I'm about as popular as a porcupine. Excuse me, folks. Yes, Bertie? I wondered if one of you strong men would come back in the kitchen and open a fruit jar for me. You bet, PB. Well, if it takes a strong man, I guess I'd better do it. <laughs> Excuse me, Miss Kelly. Hurry back, Mr. PB. Very well. May. What is it, Rockmorton? Now that PB's out of the room, I want you to know I only asked him after you said you couldn't come. Oh, it's, it's quite all right. No, it isn't. I want it to be just we two. You and me. I like it this way, Throckmorton. I'm just glad I'm the only girl. Oh, I hope you don't think I'd ask another girl with you here. You want me to answer it? I'm up. Yeah, will you, Peavy? Anything to keep him busy. Well, hello, Miss Henshaw. Mr. Peavy. Irene? Who's Irene? What a surprise to see you here. Yeah, you're a surprise, too. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Throckmorton. Hello? Hello? I didn't go to the country for cranberries after all. Throckmorton, who is this cranberry queen? <laughs> you, well, uh, come in, Irene. I want you to meet someone. Oh, I... Oh. 
I, I didn't know you had company. You know why you marry her. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Henshaw, I want you to meet Miss Kelly. Irene May. Hello, May. How do you do? <clears throat> Uh, I w- wouldn't have come, Throckmorton, but I-, I saw Leroy, and he said you were home all alone. Yeah, well, I... He wishes you was. <laughs> I-, I suppose I should have called, but since you invited me earlier... He invited me earlier, too. Of course. After I couldn't come, I might have realized he'd probably call somebody else. Zeke. I'm sure he called you after he left my place. I was going skiing. Really? Too bad you didn't. The drifts are so deep. (laughs) I'm sure I was the last one to be called, but I was the first to answer. (laughs) Well, a man doesn't like to be lonesome on a day like this. Oh, this was just insurance, I suppose. (laughs) <laughs> yes, but Throckmorton took out so many policies. <laughs> well, let's make the best of it, girl. Yeah, that's the spirit, Peavy. Help me out. <laughs> you know, it does have its amusing aspects. May, did Throckmorton tell you he'd planned this just for you? No, I... Oh, yes. The fire, the dinner. He even ordered the snow. <laughs> well, I... I'll admit this is a little embarrassing, but I'm glad to have you all. That is, Nay, I... he told me if I didn't come, he'd be sitting by the fire all alone. That's exactly what the big lug told me. <laughs> yeah, he told me that, too, but I'm big-hearted. I'm forgiven. <laughs> oh, well, so do I. Oh, naturally, we forgive him. We consider the source. <laughs> They'd really tear into me if Petey wasn't here. Uh, Will you answer the phone, Bertie? I'm right here. Did you invite another girl, Throckmorton? No, no, indeed. But still, please, Reverend. Yes, ma'am, he's here. Uh Uh-oh. Just a minute, I'll tell him. Mr. Petey, Mrs. Petey got home. She did, heavens to Betsy. Shall I tell you over here with Mr. Gillsleeve and the girls? Where do you know? Tell her I'll be right home. Baby, you can't leave me in this situation. No, no, I wouldn't say that. (laughs) Ray Gillisleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. Next time you're shopping, why don't you pick up a pound of Kraft's Parquet Margarine? On the package, you'll see a truly remarkable offer. A chance to get famous Powers model nylon stockings at half price. They're 51-gauge, 15-denier nylons and guaranteed first quality. And you can get them for just 75 cents with the yellow end flap from a Parquet package. Get Parquet tomorrow, the delicious margarine that spreads smoothly even when ice cold. Crafts Parquet Margarine. Imagine both of your girls show up for dinner at the same time, Uncle. You now, I'll see here, young man. You were partly responsible. Me? You were the one who told Miss Henshaw I was home. It took a lot of doing to make up with her. Well, gosh, how did I know Miss Kelly was here? Well, from now on, don't commit me. Don't tell them I have a date. Don't tell them I'm home. Don't tell them anything. Okay, okay. I'll get it, Unc. Yeah, you remember that, Leroy. Oh, sure. It's important. Hello? Leroy, this is Miss Henshaw. Yes, ma'am? Hereafter, don't tell the girls anything. What's your uncle say? He says, don't tell you anything, Miss Henshaw. Miss Henshaw, Leroy, give me that phone. Good night, folks. Great Gilded is played by Willem Waterman. Radio Network production. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White. It is transcribed. Included to the cast are Walter Ketley, Kathy Lewis, Lillian Randolph, Neil Bon, and Dick LeGrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Easton saying tonight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of the great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Delicious cold cuts for luncheon or supper make a welcome change of pace from the hot meals you've been serving. Easy to fix, too, but here's a tip. Be sure there's delicious craft prepared mustard on the table. Because when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. There are two kinds of craft mustard. Mild craft mustard, so smooth and delicately spiced. 
and craft mustard with snappy horseradish added to give it extra zip. Keep both kinds on hand for different tastes. Next time, get craft prepared mustard. <laughs> Now play You Bet Your Life with Groucho on the NBC Radio Network.